This is the Cobra S1, Anycubic's first Core XY printer, and you might see some similarities between this one and, let's say, another well-known Core XY printer. At a time when we see a huge amount of, let's be nice and say, emulation, it should be no surprise that Anycubic 2, despite never having created a Core XY machine in the past, are on this as well with rabid fervor. Boasts of ease of use, quality, and reliability are at stake, and each big manufacturer is making their claims. But while we see companies like Reality and Chidi Tech each foraying into the engineering space with heated build chambers and 350-degree hot ends, Anycubic seem to be trying to appeal to basically everyone. And I think this printer is emblematic of this. This is not a complicated printer. It's supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be experimented with, not supposed to have a million different settings or to be modern. It's for beginners, but specifically, it's for everyone who has heard of 3D printing in the last year since a certain printer came out that is really interested in it now. So let me be blunt in telling you, if you want a printer to mod, to add on and tinker with, this one's not for you. If you want something appliance-like, something that's very simple, keep watching. Let's take a look at the specs. Now, this printer has a build volume of 250 by 250 by 250 millimeters, and the more squarish shape does actually make it look very collected and appliance-y. I like that about it, and the streamlined, rotatable screen. But enough of aesthetics. Max print speed is 600 millimeters per second. Acceleration is 20k. Sound familiar? It should. But things differ a bit now. This printer has a 320 degree hot end and a 120 degree build plate, which does kind of suggest that it's more oriented towards higher temp, more technical materials. It does have a standard PEI build plate and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Like other Anycubic printers, it does have Wi-Fi connectivity and cloud functionality. And like other Anycubic printers, it does not support dual band networks. That's not a problem for most people. Just keep your router at 2.4 gigahertz. And like a lot of printers, it does have spaghetti detection and tangle detection with the Ace Pro. I tested this, and for the first test, which was literally just me knocking the model off the build plate, it worked perfectly. It paused the print and was fine. However, later on, I had a support fall off this Gengar, resulting in a small spaghetti mess, and the printer continued printing until completion. Tangle detection worked perfectly every time. I tested it multiple times, and I have zero issues with tangle detection. It works perfectly. Uh, even when I accidentally tested it, more on that later, it worked fine. Anycubic have rolled out their new slicer, Slicer Next, which I'm happy to say is based on open source Orca Slicer. Now, those of you who watch this channel regularly will know that I am a huge fan of Orca Slicer, so having the Orca layout and functionality is a big plus for me. However, there is one thing I noticed when testing, and that is that flushing volumes are not included in the slicer. They're only available via the printer screen during the print. Now, if you're not familiar with flushing volumes, this is a feature in Orca Slicer and lots of other slicers that decide how much of the new filament should be extruded through the hot end to get rid of the old color. Orca Slicer can do this depending on which filament is switching to whichever other filament. So if you're switching from a pink filament to a red filament, it's not a huge problem. You can have this quite low, maybe even down to 0.7 or even less. In this way, you don't unnecessarily waste filament. But if you're switching from black to white, you need a good volume flushed through the hot end so you don't have a bleed through of colors leading to a sort of grayish color, which can ruin the print. I tried lowering the volume for a print with black and white. I was curious to see what effect it would have, and I set it to 0.8, and this is what we got. As you can see, there is a lot of bleed through of the black in the white. Anycubic have optimized this value pretty well. A value of one is totally sufficient for black and white. But what is not so great is that you can only set this as one value for all of the filaments. In Orca, you can set this for each individual color change in the print. Red to white, green to yellow, black to white, and vice versa can all have specific volume values. This allows for greater control over waste management, that being this, your printer's poop. Anycubic's Slicer X, despite being based on Orca Slicer, does not have flushing volumes built into it. You have to do it via the printer screen while the printer is printing. And like I said before, you only have one value for all of the filaments, so you will see more waste on this printer. It depends on the model, but when we are printing something with a lot of uh, filament swaps per layer, we did see a lot of waste. 
Moving over to the Ace Pro, it does look very similar to the AMS, but there are considerable differences. Most notably, the Ace Pro can't feed multiple filaments at the same time. If you want to put in filament for the first time, you insert one, wait for it to feed, and the next one, and so on. It actually only has two motors, one feed motor and one selection motor. So the selection motor operates a system of cams that select a gear, and then the feed motor will turn that gear and push the filament to the printhead. So this is quite unlike the AMS, which has, I think, five motors. We only had one problem with the Ace Pro, and that was, weirdly enough, with our opaque spools. So we only had this problem in channel three or channel four and transparent spools, uh, no problem. Other filament brands, no problem. But when we put our opaque spools in three or four, we had an issue. But if we put them in one or two, it worked just fine. The issue was that the spool would feed in perfectly. However, during retractions, the grips on the bearings holding the spool would either slip or not move. So when filament was retracting, the spool would barely move. Because of this, the filament strand would keep backing up with nowhere to go, and on a couple of occasions, it actually got stuck behind another spool and got tangled. I'm happy to say, though, that the Ace Pro did detect this tangle and pause the print each time, so we didn't have a fail print because of that. Still, it was an issue. We're still not entirely sure what the problem was. It might have something to do with the shape of the rim of the spool. It might have something to do with the material it's made of or how robust these are because they're kind of stocky. Um, it might have also have something to do with the construction of the Ace Pro itself because the problem is really only an issue in the third or fourth channels, basically as the further right you go. We tried a lot of different brands of spools and our 3 dj opaque spools were the only ones that had an issue. Despite this problem, I think the Ace Pro is actually a pretty decent budgetized version of the AMS. Let's talk about noise. So the printer itself is really quiet. It's very, very quiet. They did that really well. In fact, if you have watched our other videos in the last few weeks, while I am sitting at my desk, I have the Cobra S1 printing the whole time behind me, and you can't hear it, but you can hear the clatter of plates from the dining room a floor beneath me. So in reporting back on noise, Anycubic did a pretty good job with this. The Ace Pro is sometimes not as quiet though. Sometimes, sometimes you can actually hear the filament going through the gear. Most of the time it's fine. And also I had this in my office behind me while recording videos and you could barely hear it. But when you have the dryer going, it is noticeable. And of course, this brings me to the dryer. The AMS doesn't have a dryer. The Creality CFS doesn't have a dryer. This has a dryer. While there is no hygrometer on the Ace Pro, it does have a temperature reading on the printer screen. This dryer will go up to 45 degrees, which is more than enough for PLA. There is no desk and container either for the Ace Pro, but there are actually already community designs for this, should you wish to update it. And just like other MMUs, if you have two colors of the same kind, when one runs out, the other one will start automatically. This is enabled by default on the printer menu, but you can turn it off if you want. Now to the hot end. As mentioned before, it goes up to 320 degrees and is quick swap, which is great, but it is just a brass nozzle, so you can't print abrasive materials on this just yet. We are waiting for steel nozzles. This is a great pity because I was really interested to try PPSCF on this printer. The specs are just about good enough to print it, but then I found out it was a brass nozzle and I was a bit disappointed. Now, this doesn't limit you if you want to print a non-abrasive technical filament. It can actually print ABS really, really well, and I'm quite happy with the quality. No warping, no layer splitting, the chamber can heat up to the required amount for ABS, and the PEI just works. The nozzle is stuck to the block, so you're swapping them both. However, the printer uses a relatively retro heating cartridge and thermistor, which are secured with grub screws. On to print quality, it's good. It's not X1 quality, but it's pretty good. What about normal PLA multicolor prints? That's probably why you tuned into this video. We want multicolor. Let's check it out. These little lion guys came out great. The color is good, no bleeding, no ringing, perfect bed adhesion. This Benchy, awesome. No issues whatsoever. This little unicorn dude, a tiny bit of layer inconsistency here. There are some other issues which I'm putting down to a difficult model to color in the slicer. It was just the way it was meshed. It was pretty good. This was actually the first model I sliced myself on this printer, and I've always had issues with Anycubic's default profiles. They never really fit 
our Eco PLA super well. Most obvious thing I had to change was the extrusion factor, so I had to bump it up to 110% for this. This minion, only a slight amount of bleed through of the gray into the yellow, something that is very easily fixed with the flushing volumes. The only other real issue was the supports, which also needed some tweaking from the default profile. There was also the mouse that we showed earlier. Apart from the bleed through, it was pretty nice. And this Gengar, which was the second print after the supports dislodged, came out pretty well too. Lastly, one of our Discord members designed this awesome YouTube play button. It came out pretty perfectly with the exception of the corner here, which made me think there was a leveling issue. I re-leveled and did a first layer test, which came out beautifully, actually. So, final verdict. Well, it really comes down to price. AnyCubic have always been the budgeteers of 3D printing, and this is basically a budgetified version of the X1 combo. However, there are some improvements. So, first of all, there's the dryer. There is also the high-powered hot end. But this does not have the print quality of an X1, and it also generates more waste, and it also doesn't have a steel nozzle. But the X1 combo right now in the Bamboo store is €1,400, and the Anycubic Cobra S1 combo is €629 Euro in our shop right now. But maybe we should also compare this to the P1S printer, which is already a budgeted version of the X1. I hope this product breakdown has helped any of you on the edge about getting a 3D printer. If you think this is the right printer for you, then let us know down in the comments. And if you think this is the absolute worst printer for you, write that down too. Let's start a discussion. And of course, if you have some questions, you're very welcome to ask us. And if you'd like to join our Discord, there is also a link down below for that. You can join us there. And we we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.